three things with in the second service then we close we have a lot of meetings today a lot of meetings uh, Apu can sign for me sign those letters for me please let's be on our feet as we read Acts chapter 9 Acts chapter 9. The media is saying maybe I should go back to the pulpit. But I say it will take time. Okay. Acts chapter 9. From Let's be on our feet and read together. Only seven verses we are going to read this in this service. In the second service we will read that one here. 8 to 20. That's 12 verses in the second service. Acts chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 7. Once it's on screen, I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2, till we get to 7. Let's go, I read. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Verse 2. Let's wait, so I can read together in uniform. Verse 2, on screen please. Sagada Baskene. Thank you, let's go. And ask letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way whether men or women he might bring them bound to the to Jerusalem verse 3 I read verse 3 as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven now you read verse 4 can we have verse 4? Thank you. Let's go. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I read verse 5. Shagadabas. And he said, How are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Sorry, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you persecute, who you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Let's go verse 6. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Let's read verse 7 together. It's the last one from this service. One, two, and let's go. And the men who, were, who, who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Let's be seated. Father, we ask for a message. Uluabawa Soro. Yekarie Kogbamu. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, when I read Acts 9, you know, the Lord kept saying, we should look at the message from it. So I brought four things. If you look at verse 1 and 2, you will see that the Bible says he was breathing threats against the disciples. He was breathing threats. And verse 2, the Bible says he went to uh, arrange, you know, for letters, for approvers from top officials in the, uh, uh, in the priesthood. Let's arrest these people. If we find anyone that claims to be a believer of Jesus, we'll arrest them and we'll cast them to prison. It was heavy threats. Now, and this is the first point I saw. Don't ever allow the gathering together or the threats of the wicked they should I come again don't ever allow the gathering together or the threat of the wicked to create fear in your heart or to make you doubt God don't ever allow the gathering together or the threat of the wicked to create fear in you or make you doubt God you know, it is important that somebody should hear this message. On Friday, one of our brothers came to see me. He said, sir, sir, there's a woman in my area. This woman is demonic. I said, what does she do? Why are you saying she's demonic? He said, this woman sells food. He said, but sir, do you know that 12 midnight, this woman will start to worship. She's, she will stay opposite our house and he, she'll be washing plates. She will wash plates from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. And this our brother said, Ah, once I see a washing place like that, I will jump up and begin to pray. As he was talking, I was laughing. He said, sir, why are you laughing? 
I said, why will you allow somebody's washing plate to, this, to disturb your own sleep? He said, sir, who knows whether they are, they are, there is a gang up. I now told him, there is nowhere it is written in the scriptures that they will not gather. The Bible even says they will gather. You know, and that's where so many children of God get to and they become afraid. Some of you think because the wicked is gathering against you, because they are speaking against you, because they are making plans, God has forgotten you. Tell me, man, Rony. Yeah, Uluwa, El Washing Kura Mojo, El Washing Kura Mojo, El Ubu, Washing, Tot Washing Betero, Simi, Uluwa Sheti Suni. Now, when Saul was making these threats, against the church and going from place to place to get letters listen a normal man will think that god was not doing anything i don't hear the roaring should not bother you the roaring of your enemy should not make you feel that your god has either abandoned you or forgotten you you know, yesterday morning, I had this encounter. I woke up very early. You know, my wife was studying on the study table. So, I was, I woke up, I had her studying, you know, and I, as I woke up, I checked the bed. I didn't see her. I peeked. I saw that she was studying. So, I quickly gathered my, my own Bible. I was really, as I was meditating, listen, God now said to me, says, son, do you know that anything you have as a vision in mind, until you write it down, you have not believed that it can be possible. He says, son, write down those things that you think is bothering you. So I started writing those things, one after the other. Lord this, Lord this, Lord this, Lord this. He said, because see, the first step of faith is for you to write down what you believe. So I wrote them down. I said, Lord, over all these things, help me, help me. Do you know that last night I was just on the couch when I saw something I called my wife. I said, do you know that it was just yesterday night I showed her my study, my, my daily devotion note. I wrote down these things that I want God to do. Two already has been fixed out of the whole, no, even not two, four has been settled. With what I saw, four is settled already. Don't allow in, don't allow the gathering together or the roaring. Tell your neighbor, God did not forget me. I will show you scriptures to that. Praise the Lord. God doesn't abandon his own. Now look at these scriptures. John chapter 14, 8, 18 and 19. God does not use abandon. He does not leave his own on you, uh, take you to a wayside and forget. No, no, God doesn't do that. John chapter eight, uh, chapter fourteen, verse eighteen and nineteen. When Jesus was talking to his disciples, he said, "See, I will not leave you comfortless. I won't leave you without comfort. I will never leave. You. That's me. He said, I will never leave you without comfort. I will send the comforter to you. Can we have that scripture on screen? He said, God will never forget you. That's why, as children of God." Don't bother yourself about the roaring of the enemy. A lot of believers have allowed the gathering together of the wicked make them throw their faith away. Do you know that a lot of people don't believe in God again because they had people are gathering together. Ah, there's a plan that they are planning. There is nowhere in the Bible that says they will not plan. Let them plan. There is nowhere in the Bible that says they will not try to do, let them do what they want to do. At least have you forgotten when Israel left Egypt? They saw by their eyes, with their eyes, the army of Egypt was coming behind. Hey, that's what everybody was thinking. Death is coming. And where were they? They stood in front of the, the Red Sea. They couldn't go forward, they couldn't come backward. They couldn't go forward, they couldn't come back. They were, what do I do? What do we do? They were standing right there. And instantly they began to cry, curse God and curse their leader. You know why they were doing that? They thought that their God had abandoned them. This message is for somebody. God has not abandoned you. If you think he has abandoned you, I will show you what will happen next. Can we have the scripture? Is there any problem? Thank you. I love that song. 
Listen, while Saul was receiving approval from authorities to attack believers, it was though the church was finished. That's what people will be thinking. If somebody is in John chapter 14, read it for me. John 14, 18 and 19. Okay, thank you. He said, I will what? Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. That's what he's saying. Next verse, verse 19. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Verse 19. Verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because what? Because I live, you will live also. Say amen to that. So don't let, don't be bothered by their gathering. Don't be bothered by their gang up. Don't be bothered about their discussion. At the junction, you will see God show up. I read, I move on. God did not say they will not gather. Isaiah 54. I want us to read this verse 15 from the old King James, KJV. Isaiah 54 and verse 15. Shagada base the lebase. Not new King James. I want old King James. I use the word gada. Sagada baske. Shagada bares. I'm waiting. KJV. Indeed, they shall surely assemble. Can you see it's the same? In, now, he said, Behold, they shall surely gather together. But what? But not by me. Do you know that God, at times God may not show up even when they gather gather together and come in front of you. God may decide not to show up at that moment. It may be inside their meeting. Ah, uh, one shot to Joseph. One shot to Dashola Rai. One shot to Jusinu, Sinu Konga. But you can't know what you can do again. Tabati Epa. Ale Tabo Boy. Kadelu Wugba. Owo Tabagba. At least Afishi in Karekan. They didn't know that what they were actually doing was in the plan of God. Joseph needed to get to Egypt at that time. Gather. What's that scripture? They will gather. That's what the scripture says. He, the Bible didn't say they won't gather. He said, but behold, behold, they shall surely gather together. But not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. That's why, O oh child of God, you have no reason to commit suicide. Because some will say, ah, what it turn, what it turn, ah, the banks are coming, they are coming, I borrowed. Some will say, ah, ah, it is finished, it is finished, they've given me sack letter. Do you know what God wants to do next? Anything that God allows to come your way is for a purpose. So many believers lose faith at this foundation level. They have gathered. Ah, Saul has obtained a letter to come and arrest us. We are finished. You are not finished, sir. You know, there was one important event like that that happened in Nigeria during the reign of the former military uh, dictatorship. Uh, uh, President uh, uh, Sonia Bacha, you remember his case? That there was a coup. They wanted to take government from him. And he, 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 the coup failed. And he told, he said, put all of them in prison. They put all of them in prison. Dia was one of them. All of them were in prison. And they made, you know, in, in the military court, they don't waste time the way they waste time in uh, normal court. We are joined the case, we are joined the case. No, no, no. The soldiers will sit down. They will say, according to our law, if you commit this crime, it's liable to death. They judged them death by firing squad. God didn't intervene when, when they were judging. But they were supposed to kill them the second day morning. Sonia Bata died that night. Kill it tomorrow. Now, I told you I used to read Tell Magazine a lot those days. I don't know whether they say I have Tell Magazine. Do they say I have Tell Magazine? I used to read Tell Magazine. I read the story that as he died, he said, eh, uh, eh, uh, uh, what's his name? To I see Mustafa said the judgment must be carried out. 
got the next ve- military vehicle ready. Let's go to the uh, uh, prison to pick those guys and kill them. They said, another, another military man gathered Dia and Co, put them in a car. As they were coming out, they saw Mustafa come. He told them, lie down. Death passed them. Just like that. Your God is not asleep. Your God has not abandoned you. He didn't say they will not gather. He said, but since their gathering is against the Lord and his anointed, what will happen? They shall surely scatter. That's the first lesson I saw. Then in verse 3 to 4, look at verse 3 and 4. Acts chapter 9, verse 3 and 4. Shows us that a battle against the believer is a battle against Jesus himself. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shone light round about him. A light from heaven. Verse 4. A light from heaven. The light shone around him. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Now go back to verse 1. Let's see who those he was fighting. Go back to verse 1. And Jesus is now saying, why are you persecuting me? Saul, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against who? Against the disciple. Who is a disciple? A follower of Christ. Who is a disciple again? A follower of Christ. I think it was on Bible study on Wednesday I told you. A disciple is a follower of Christ. Christi. Now, a battle against the disciple is a battle against Jesus. I always tell people, Emma Bogunti Mio, and it's about Bogun to me, meaning Latin Badua. Jesus, Ryan, Loma Bijami. Listen, take it note, take note of it. Verse 3 and 4 shows us that a battle against the believer is a battle against Jesus himself. He gave all, he, sorry, he, he, he came all out, came all out to defend his own. He came all out to defend his own. Jesus will always defend you. You just keep serving him. Why are you persecuting me? Eh? Sir, you know what, uh, what was happening to Saul? I don't know you, sir. Who are you? I've not seen you before. And you say I'm persecuting you. If you are born again, you don't know what you have. Show me verse 5. I want to see, show you something. In verse 5. In verse 5. Shagadabase. Listen, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I am Jesus. But you are not the one I'm fighting. I wrote something that I want to read. Do you know that while the attack was on, nobody in the church knew that Jesus was already fighting for them? That's how it is. You are just here serving God. You don't know what is happening in the camp of the enemy because of you. Do you know that none of the disciples knew that Jesus had, had struck Saul? Now, if you ask the enemy and they tell you what they are facing because of you, you'll be shocked. A lot of the enemies, their life is under attack because of, and they know. Praise the Lord. Do you know that sorry? Do you know that at times it is only the enemy that is aware that they are under attack because of you? At times it's only I want to go to the But you know, God will not come. Jesus didn't come back to tell them in church, hey, yeah, disciples, don't worry, I'm fighting for you. He was fighting his fight silently. So every child of God, born again Christian, that is here, hear me. God is fighting your fight for you. Say, God is fighting my fight for me. What should you do? Maintain your faith. Even when you don't see him or you didn't hear him tell you anything, he's fighting for you. Now, so many battles are going on. So many people are, are receiving attacks. 
because of the love of God for your life. But you don't know. To them, Paul is still coming with letter. In fact, some of them would have run away. They didn't know that Jesus had met him on the way. This is why you should maintain your faith in God. No matter what, no matter what, because you don't know what is happening in the camp of the enemy. Jesus our Lord goes all to defend his own. I've shared it with you severally now. I've shared it with you severally. And I love sharing it again. That time that Am Robbers came to Flora B here. I didn't know anything. Ah, Mokule. I didn't go to face them. But I didn't know that Jesus our Lord was already defending me. I didn't know where they, why their gun did not work. I didn't know why the arm robber was saying, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It was when he started doing like this and pointing to me, doing like this and pointing to the gun, the gun refused to start, that I knew that, ah, I see your Lord for me. God is fighting for you. Oh, child of God, did you hear me? God is fighting your fight. He doesn't need to tell you that he's fighting for you. All you should do, oh, child of God, learn from Acts chapter 9, maintain your faith in God. Praise the Lord. Let's look at our third lesson. Only four and I will close. Our third lesson is in verse 6. Third lesson, verse 6. Acts chapter 9 and verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Question. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now look up. Verse 6 shows us the love of God that is made available to the willing. You know, the same Paul, look at Jesus here. Willing, willing, willing. If you are willing, because I told you are willing. Ti wo ba sha ti je ni to se ke to ba ti jo to shetan tabi to jo wo ara e ko si ye ese to wu ko ti da seyin ni won igba to ba ti se ke oluwa mo de jo wo ara mi mo shetan that's the end i learned this here this same soul that we are talking about he was the one that was telling people that was killing Stevie. bring your clothes i will hold it for you oya e ka so yin wa e ka so yin wa e ka so yin he held it now this same Paul was the man that obtained a letter to go and arrest the disciples. This same Paul was the one that was struck with, with the light of, of Christ. But the moment he said, what would you have me to do, Lord? Can you imagine? He was forgiven. It shows us the power of the love of God that is made available to the willing. The power of the love of God that is made available to the repentant. God, listen, God is more interested in showing you love than in judging you. God is more interested in showing you love than in bringing judgment upon you. That's why, if I'm you, what do you do to activate the love of God? Be willing. You know, that's why I always tell people, you can't fight for God. Somebody that is a witch last night can become an evangelist tomorrow morning. You can't fight for God. You can't say, ah, ah, you can't fight for God. Ah, you can't fight for God. Hello? Gateway to the love of God is what? Your wi willingness. Once you are willing, you have access. That's why, as you see me, Pastor Prince, I don't judge people. I don't condemn people. I don't write people off. Do you know why? I didn't die for them. Jesus did. Somebody can be saying, there is no God. God is, there is no God. God is dead. And one minute to 12 midnight, the person realized, ah, and I'm sorry. Yo. They said, come on, you that had him said there is no God. They said, you are surprised. That person had an encounter last night. You were not there. 
Sahia, 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 Sahia. Listen, I don't hear. It is your attitude that will determine what you get from God. Your attitude is what will determine what you get from God. His question, that's Saul's question reveals his willingness. What will you have me do, Lord? That's what I want to ask you. Do you still want to remain in your stubbornness? Even me that I'm your pastor, I make mistakes. I make leadership mistakes. At times I say what I'm not supposed to say. And once I realize, I may not come back to consult you to say that thing that I said that I'm not supposed to say, I'm sorry. I may not come back to tell you. I may have said to that, ah, Lord. And I was not supposed to say what I said. God's love and mercy is not far from the willing. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. Saga Dabaskine. I want to rush through so I can take the fourth one before we close. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. Can we read from another scripture? It says, if you have your scriptures opening, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat what? The best of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. I wrote here, your openness to God. Listen. Your openness to do his will, sorry, opens you up to his love. Your openness to do his will opens you up to his love. Push yourself to open up to God and tell him, Lord, I am willing. Instantly, the killer received the call and became an apostle. God is not interested in judging you the way he's interested in showing you mercy. Did you get the message? The last one. Can we read verse 7? Let's take the fourth message, which is the last one for this morning. Sagada Baskeni. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but not but seeing no man. Now, does this surprise you? The light shh. Saul saw, saw him. Ah. Was looking at him. All this encounter and experience that Saul had. Can you imagine all the men that were with him? And the men, not one. All the men around him did not see what he saw. Now listen, take this note. Take this note. Take this note. You will miss God if you wait until everyone around you confirm what you saw in brackets the encounter you had can i come again you will miss god if you wait until everyone around you confirm what you saw in brackets the encounter you had can I tell you why a lot of children of God have, have missed the plan of God for their life? They are waiting for people to agree. Everybody cannot see what you saw. Listen, he saw Jesus. He saw the light that struck him. He spoke with Jesus. But the Bible says those men only had voice. If he said, I saw somebody, say, no, 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 he didn't say anybody. Witness of four or five is true. But on this case, only him know what he saw, sir, ma. Only you can know what you saw that made you to serve God the way you are serving God. Some of you have a call for ministry, but you are waiting for confirmation. If my husband does not agree, I will not do ministry. If my wife does not agree, I will not do ministry. If my father does not agree, I will not do ministry. If my mother does not agree, I will not do ministry. You are waiting. My own parents too did not agree to what God told me at first. But I was sure what I saw. That's why encounter with God is personal.
if you are waiting for everybody to confirm, you won't do the will of God. How will Saul had explained this? Can you now imagine? Listen, this same Saul was the man that became Paul and he wrote 90% of the New Testament. This is what he would have thrown away if he was waiting. That's why as a child of God, you cannot live on public opinion. I come again. You cannot live on public opinion. A minimum more encounter Timoni. Timoshin sin or Lord Bimoshin sin. I wrote here. Encounter is a personal thing. A lot of believers miss out of God's plan because they are in bracket, we're waiting. They are, they are, or in bracket, we're waiting for people to confirm what they saw. Hey, Joseph, you now come to me. Papa, Papa, the Lord is speaking to me to go into ministry full time. What do you say about it? I didn't see what you saw. If you tell me, I will say, ah, Mrs. Christopher, you have three children. How will they feed? Ah, Mrs. Christopher, Gariti won. Mrs. Christopher, 5,000 lewa. Mrs. Christopher, you know, that's what I will say as a natural man. But if my counseling killed what you saw, you didn't see anything. Ah, but if you are not what you saw, and it's a oh, you mean to move say, Oh, God, every every everything about my life is governed with encounter. The wife I married, even in those days when we have misunderstanding, I used to tell myself. If I have mis- when we had misunderstanding at the at the point of our marriage that I was saying it was looking as if this marriage would crash. So Timba definitely I will stay. I didn't know that my marriage will now work. Encounter, I come again. It's personal. Some people may want to copy you. You see that their own fire will not last. I want to monk or to re to fit decide that he join choir. I want to monk or to re to fit one no altar. I want to monk or to re to fit one technica. I want to monk to re. In fact, so many of you have been in departments when the department was not even a department. But the problem with so many of God's students today is that we are waiting for public opinion. I was teaching them at the Bible school at Telebu yesterday. But you know, there are, there are a lot of teachings against Titan. Hey, what's up? My own tight life. And Titan, Timo Manson, Kishi Pastor, who preached for me. I'm not paying tight because people are preaching about Titan. My pastor didn't preach, preach, preach tight. I'm not paying tight according to Malachi 3. You know where I got an encounter of Titan? I got it from the life of Abraham. The Bible says, and Abraham gave a tenth of all he had to Melchizedek, and Melchizedek blessed him. I saw it by myself. I studied it. I understood it. And I made a covenant. I won't joke with my tithe. I've been paying tithe now. It's over 30 years. Sir, sir, pay me, oh, Shagbini. Eh? To the glory of God, oh, by grace. It's not because somebody preached it. Must study the scripture. I had this encounter as a young Christian. I saw how David slept with Bathsheba. And before David's eyes, he lost almost everything that was precious to him. Right there, as a young Christian, not even as a pastor, I knelt down in my room and I said, Lord, I make a covenant with you. I will not involve myself in sexual sin. What have you seen? Or you are still waiting for public opinion. Sir, I have had several opportunities to quit ministry. I'm telling you plain practical truth. Members of my family have told me, Pastor, 
In fact, one, one of my daughters told me of recent, Daddy, why not move to Lagos? What we are doing in Baden, if we are doing it in Lagos, we will have gone far. I now sat down and I said, sit down. I know it is out of your care for your daddy. Do we lack anything? He said, no. But you want us to have more? He said, yes. I said, listen, when it comes to divine assignment, I had God clearly about Ibadan. And my ministry mostly is based on producing leaders and sending them forth. And I said, do you imagine? For the first time, I went to meet past, uh, uh, a prophet Owa for the first time about 11 years ago. As I was entering his office, the Baba just stood up and said, Eleven years ago. And that time I was contemplating, I was praying in my house, I want to quit. I want to run to Lagos. Is Lagos a bad place? No. But I believe that there's a divine placement for everyone. Right here. They can't have your kind of fire since they didn't have your kind of encounter. And it's your near encounter. Baba dear, kule ni nu kule kule ni nu ina toni. So why are you allowing people to quench your fire? Tia 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 kpoju. You want to make it today? On Saturday, kiki kiki. Shengon sangu fweni. They don't have the encounter you have. I mean, momenti mori. Do you know that God can also give you encounter about the leader you follow? Let me summarize because of time. Stop waiting for the multitude before you obey God. Stop waiting for the multitude. Ye duro de ero kotoshe ife oloro. Stop waiting for the multitude. I've been a pastor now for over over 30 years 32 years can I tell you this one truth he has never disappointed me before die minutes to shame Bam. miracle will just show and most times you know what I do I'll just begin to laugh <laughs> <laughs> he has done it again. Don't joke with these four lessons. So, if there's anything the Lord God has given you encounter concern, please focus on it. So, if you God gave you encounter and that encounter led to certain instructions, please follow it. Only Paul. That's why it was only Paul that, after that day, it was only Paul that went into ministry. Those four men went back to tell the high priest. The four didn't see what he saw. And since they didn't see what he saw, they couldn't act what he, the way he acted. What have you seen? Or are you still waiting for general opinion? Kill a saucer. Kill a nobody told me sir to stop taking alcohol I read scriptures I studied it I saw something and I made up my mind if you tell me to be telling you my encounters oh boy. the day I had encounters about fathers I don't speak against any father even if the father is in error, the, the worst I can do is to pray for that person. I saw it. You cannot touch the Lord's anointed and go guiltless. I was studying the book of uh, as, uh, for, uh, Second Samuel when I saw, when I had that encounter. No, First Samuel when I saw that encounter. And 
The voice of God came that day. He said, son, at times, I, God, will allow a sergeant to see the error of a general. It is not because I want him to mock the general, but for him to learn not to make mistake on that part. Are you blessed? Have you learned something? Let's ask for more encounters this morning. Let's pray that Lord, reveal more of yourself to me in the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to the Lord. We have just two minutes. More of yourself. Fira arecha misi ulua. Jubi moshe malo. More, oh God, of yourself reveal to me. Ya gada baba sende lebo sene. Renguri araba sata yanga da basende le bos. Shagada gada basende le bos sata ya. More of yourself, Lord. I want to have one-on-one -on -one encounter. I want to have one-on-one -on -one encounter with you, oh God. Show me more. More vision that will make my fire to increase. In 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 Give me more encounters, oh God. Are you praying? Le gada basoto ye gada baskene. Barege de bosoto ye maskene. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you again today. We give you all the glory and all the praise. My Father, my God, thank you for the teaching of today. Give us grace that it will register in our heart in Jesus' name. It shall not be stolen. You will use it, O God, Lord, to transform our lives and to prepare us as better saints in the name of Jesus. As we go into this new week, I rebuke every plan of the devil against us in the name of Jesus. I declare that this week is blessed. All we lay our hands upon to do this week shall prosper. Thank you, Father, for this is done. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Let's rise up as we share the grace together. One, two, three, and let's go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our life. And we 